Dr. Zakia, um, are there any particular activities a Muslim should concentrate upon during this blessed month of Ramadan? And of course, we should relate to you the importance of the fact that our viewers really can gain massive benefit by knowing specific activities they can get involved in and they can start planning the Ramadan now. Yes, I believe that this is a very good question because most of the activities we'll be dealing as time goes on in the episode. But just to give a brief outline, I will just specify a few important, because the whole answer will take very long. The few important points that will be noted is that number one, it is the niyyah. The niyyah is very important. The niyyah of fasting should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for a fasting to be accepted, the niyyah is important. So making the niyyah is very important, without which the fasting will not be accepted. Number two is observing the sunnah of the fast that we'll be dealing in detail in the next few days. But just a point to be noted that one of the important sunnah is that we should have suhur as late as possible, that is just before the break of dawn, just before Fajr Salah, and we should break our fast, have iftar as early as possible, immediately after sunset. Furthermore, in this blessed month, we should be careful and we should avoid all things which are prohibited, which are haram, and all things which are makro. And this is the best opportunity where a person, if he has certain activities which are against the Sharia, whether he's doing haram activities or makro activities, this is the best time he can abstain from it. And that will be a good habit which, inshallah, he may abstain maybe throughout his life. For example, if a person is habituated to drinking alcohol, if he can abstain from having alcohol from the break of dawn to sunset, he can abstain from it from the cradle to the grave. Similarly, we should take care that we should abstain from things which are makru. For example, it is makru to stand and drink water. And if we are habituated to that, so see to it that in this month of Ramadan, while having water, we should sit down. This was the sunnah of the Prophet. So it's a good month in which you can abstain from the haram activities which you have been doing, maybe some of them, or the makro activities. Furthermore, it's a good time where you can implement many of the sunnah of the Prophet in your day-to-day -day life. For example, maybe sporting a beard. Many Muslims don't have a beard. So it's a good month where you can follow the sunnah of the Prophet. The sunnah of the Prophet about the du'as of when you enter the home, when you leave the toilet, the du'a that is there when you're traveling in a vehicle. Subhanallah, mukrinin, So this is a good month in which you can adopt as much as sunnah as possible so that we can be on the straight path. This is a very good month where you should see to it that you should offer the salah. Not only the five times salah, which is the fard, even try and offer as many nawafil and sunnah. And if you're not habituated to reading in congregation, see to it that you're in a congregation and as far as possible go to the mosque for the salah. In this month, we should be particular that we do not miss the tarawi. Many people think, and it is a fact that it is a sunnah, but many people think that because it is a sunnah, we can miss tarawi. Tarawi is a very important sunnah. Though it's not a fard, but every Muslim should make it a point that as far as possible, they should attend Tarawi because of the blessings it has. So Tarawi is very important, which Muslims should never miss. And when we offer Tarawi, many of us, we rush through Tarawi because we want to complete the Quran. And many of them read the Tarawi 100 miles per hour. We should read the Tarawi with patience at a moderate pace so that people can understand what is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if time permits, and if possible, we should try and do etikaf in the last 10 days. And while doing etikaf, make it a point that we don't socialize. Many will make a mistake of socializing during etikaf. The whole purpose of etikaf is defeated. Furthermore, we should do more dua in this month. We should do more supplications. This is the month of dua. And we should do more zikr, spend time, in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also worshipping Him. 
this is the month in which we should try and read as much as Quran as possible. Besides reciting the Quran in Arabic, if you know Arabic as a language, then there's no problem. But if you don't know, then also read the translation of the Quran in the language we understand the best. If you understand English, read in English. If you understand Urdu, read in Urdu. Read it in the language you understand the best. But while reciting the Quran, for which we get a sawab, also read the translation of the Quran so that you can implement on the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If possible, read the Quran once in every seven days, or at least read one juz every day so that you complete the Quran at least once in the full month of Ramadan. In this month, try and read as much as hadith as possible. But see to it that you read the authentic hadith. And the best book on hadith is the book of Sayyid al-Bukhari. Then it's Sayyid Muslim. You can read the other Qutub al also. But read authentic books on hadith. Read books on the lifestyle and the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See to it that if you have not given the zakat, please give the zakat which is an obligatory charity. And every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of his saving every lunar year in charity, that is zakat. And many people, they do not calculate the zakat properly. You make it a point that you calculate the zakat honestly, and it is better to give a little bit more rather than to give less. So calculate it properly and see to it that you give your zakat. And this Ramadan is a month of generosity. It's a month of sadqa. And you get 10 times more reward for your good deeds. So this is the month where you should do maximum charity. And besides that, we should make it a point that during this month, we should be cheerful. Many of the Muslims, they look dull, they look gloomy, we should be cheerful and happy. And we should give more time to our family. Many times we neglect our family. We should see to it that we give more time to our family and do all these activities collectively. We should also have husni saluk to the people around you. That means we should deal with the other human beings with mercy, with love, with care. If they've done some mistakes, they'll forgive them. This is the month of forgiveness. If you have done something wrong to them, ask for forgiveness. Live with the people around you with love, care, and with affection. We should do tafakkul. That means ponder on the things. See to it that you plan your month of Ramadan. Plan it properly. And see to it that you do not waste not even a minute, not even a second. This is the month of gaining. And this month is the best month for self-improvement also. And besides that, you should also make it a point to do islah with your other Muslim brothers and sisters. It's also the best month to do dawah. That is, convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. So it's my request to the brothers and sisters that plan your month efficiently and see to it that you utilize every second of this blessed month.